Hey everyone, welcome back to Unraveling the Pattern. I'm Lauren. We finally have our Wheel of Time Season 2 release date, as well as some first look photos and a video from Rand Althor himself. But real quick, remember you can view the chapters below to skip this self-promotion section and go directly to the spoiler warning or to the main focus of the video. I don't love saying this every time, but it does work, so be sure to like this video. It really helps my channel get seen and spread around. And please subscribe to Unraveling the Pattern. I'm hoping to get 20,000 subscribers before Season 2 comes out, but 25,000 would be even better. Most of the people who watch my videos don't subscribe. Don't be one of them. And most importantly, please watch some of my other videos. I enjoy talking about the Wheel of Time show, but I really like making lore videos and deep dives. I have a ton of videos I'd love for you to check out, and many more in the works. For now, I don't do sponsors on this channel, so if you like what I do, please consider supporting me through Patreon or here on YouTube by clicking the Join or Thanks buttons below. Special thanks to these awesome people for your continued support. May the light shine on all of you. The first part of this video has minimal spoilers, though some promotional Season 2 images will be shown. But the second part of this video will cover all of Season 1 of the TV show, as well as a summary of what to expect for some character story arcs in Season 2. I'll also speculate about some story and plot points for the first two Wheel of Time books up through The Great Hunt, as well as Season 2 of the show. So if you haven't read the first two books, or you don't even want to hear some character-related details regarding this character that aren't revealed until the end of Book 3, The Dragon Reborn, or if you wish to remain completely spoiler-free, this video might not be for you. Okay, let's get into it. For many, many days now, our friend on Twitter, at DefaultRand, has been tweeting something like the following. Day 448 of me asking at the Wheel of Time to announce Season 2 release date. I've often retweeted these over the last 448 days. Well, the official Wheel of Time account posted this response earlier today from Yosha Sturdowski. And on day 449, you get your answer. There are neither beginnings nor endings to the turning of the Wheel of Time, but Season 2 has a beginning. And that beginning is on September 1st. See you then. That's right, we're officially getting The Wheel of Time Season 2 on September 1st, 2023. That's 100 days away. This likely means a trailer is not too far distant. I'm personally very happy with this release date because I can prepare to take some time off from work to do some episode breakdowns, but also this means that Season 2 won't end right during Christmas like Season 1 did, which nearly killed me. Since we know there will be 8 episodes for Season 2, and assuming we get one episode each Friday, starting with September 1st, this means the season will be over on October 20th, or even sooner if they release more than one episode at the start. Also, they often release new episodes at midnight GMT, which means for many of us in the US, the show will actually be released on the last day of August. If you know, you know. The official Wheel of Time account also posted this short video with the announcement. Eagle-eyed viewers noticed a single frame in the video with an old tongue message. This was quickly translated by people to say, Tia mi avin moridin isande vaidin, which translates to, The grave is no bar to my call. Special thanks to at Lord Mulder for this image. I'll talk a bit about what this means in the spoilery section of the video. Along with all of this exciting news, there was also an article that came out from Entertainment Weekly, which talked about the season release date and had eight new high-res images of Season 2. The EW article also mentions a bit about what to expect in Season 2. I'll break down what I found in the spoiler part of the video, but here's a spoiler light look at the images. Recognizable characters in this shot are this woman, who we've seen in other teasers, the Dark One, and a long-haired Loyal in the background. Did you see his super cute four-toed ogier feet? We got another version of this shot, which we've now seen from other teasers of Donal Finn as Matt Cawthon. There's not much to notice in this one other than the fact that Matt is clearly crying. Poor guy. It's hard to be recast in a TV show as a main character. I'm sure that's what he's crying about. We get this awesome shot of Moraine in what looks like a busy street. Her dress is amazing. Then there's this shot of Egwene in what looks like a kitchen. Then this awesome shot of Lan on his horse, Mandarb. I wasn't sure if this was Mandarb at first, but everything matches Lan's horse from Season 1, including the saddle, girth, and saddlebags, so I'm sure this is Mandarb. This makes me wonder though, how did Lan get his horse back? I'll discuss this more in the spoiler section of the video. Next we get Nynaeve in what looks like the same set location where we recently saw Rafe answering questions for fans. I'll talk more about this in the spoiler section as well. Rand is cloaked, but he sure does have a fancy shirt on. Look at that collar. And finally, we have this shot of Perrin and Avienda and this character who I'll talk more about later. Perrin's hair is long, just like Loyal's. I'm assuming quite a bit of time has passed since the ending of season one. 
Okay, this is the part where I kindly ask people who want to avoid story spoilers to like the video before you leave. This next section will contain spoilers for Season 2 and Book 2, The Great Hunt, as well as some pretty major character-related spoilers that aren't revealed until the end of Book 3, The Dragon Reborn. Here we go. First off, The Grave is No Bar to My Call, which flashes for one frame in the Season 2 announcement video, is the old tongue inscription that's found on the Horn of Valir. This is definitely teasing the fact that we will likely see the horn being blown by the end of Season 2. I can't wait to see the heroes of the horn come to life on screen. Do you think Matt will blow the horn? Next, here's the summary of what to expect for Season 2 from the EW article. Our heroes who journeyed together from the village of Two Rivers all the way to the northern kingdom of Faldara in Season 1 are now scattered and caught up in their own individual adventures. Having learned that he is in fact the Dragon Reborn, Rand has gone into hiding so he won't harm his friends if he descends into madness like previous incarnations of the dragon did. His mentor, Moraine, has now lost her connection to the One Power and her emotional relationship with Lan along with it. While Moraine returns to her homeland in Kyrian, Egwene and Nynaeve begin their Aes Sedai training in order to learn how to control their own access to the One Power. There are also new faces to meet in Season 2. Matt Cawthon has been recast, with Donal Finn taking over the role from Barney Harris. And, as teased at the end of Season 1, soldiers of the Shan Chan Empire have arrived from across the sea in order to conquer their ancestral homeland. Just as Season 1 covered the Eye of the World, the first novel in Robert Jordan's book series, Season 2 will mostly cover the next book, The Great Hunt. But don't be surprised to see some elements from other books as well, since the show only has 8 episodes per season to tell this massive story. Okay, a lot to unpack. Marcus Rutherford said in a recent interview that Season 2 will have a time jump. I think this reaffirms that. The characters will likely already be separated at the start of the season. And we again get confirmation that Moraine will return to Kyrian, but they're careful to say that she has, quote, lost her connection to the One Power. Egwene and Nynaeve will be training in the Tower, and the Shan Chan and the majority of Book 2 will likely be the focus of Season 2, with some elements from other books as well. The Aiel are one of the big giveaways that will be getting some Book 3 elements. I like that they once again confirm that the show, quote, only has eight episodes per season to tell this massive story. I personally think that this was intentionally written as a response to the rumors that future seasons might have even fewer episodes. Let's hope Amazon isn't going to give us even fewer episodes in future seasons. That would be a major mistake in my opinion. Okay, here's what I noticed in the images. If this isn't High Lady Suroth, I'll eat my hat. But many people are also saying that this woman to her right, our left, is probably Jessica Boone, who we've known about for quite some time but didn't know what her role would be. I love how her head is shaved here. The Shan Chan aesthetic is so cool to me from what we've seen so far, and I love the colors and the color grading this time around. It feels very colorful like season one, but also a bit more gritty and realistic, which I appreciate. I hope the full season looks like this. Obviously, we've got Loyal in the background, which is pretty interesting to me. I already mentioned his cute toes, but also look at his fancy clothing, which appears to match the clothing of this other servant-looking person in the background here. This lends to my theory that at some point Perrin's group will be captured and forced to bow down and take the Shan Chan oaths, as we've seen in some of these teaser shots, before they're then let go. But my guess is that Loyal will be taken as a slave since the Ogyur are likely highly regarded by the Shan Chan. He'll probably get fast-tracked directly to serving the High Lady Surah. Also, I noticed these sword hilts that the Shan Chan soldiers are using do not match the swords from the Season 2 rap teaser. I'm still not sure whose swords these are, but perhaps they're White Cloak swords? Another thing I noticed, I mentioned this before in a video and got some pushback from people, but I think this really seals it. The Shan Chan soldiers definitely don't all match. The uniforms that these soldiers in the background are wearing are very different from the uniforms of these higher ranking looking soldiers from the sneak peek video. My guess is that these are background extras who don't get a lot of close-ups, but also I think they're probably lower rank and file Shan Chan soldiers. The most shocking part of this image is that we get the Dark One. Of course he's not really the Dark One, he's a Shamayo. I love that he continues to wear black and white, but the question here is, why is he here? Do we think that everyone in the scene can see him, or is he only visible to Suroth? I could definitely see a Shamael being more involved with manipulating certain people, and especially being more involved with pushing the Shan Chan to invade the Westlands. Some people think this means that we won't get some of the other Forsaken like Semarag, but I don't think it means that at all. It actually makes sense to me that he would be here. The question then becomes, does High Lady Suroth know who he really is? Or is he pretending to be someone else? Possibly just a high-ranking dark friend or something? In Book 2, it is revealed very early on that Suroth is a dark friend, so I wonder how a Shamael would play into this. There really isn't more to say about this next image, but I'm definitely looking forward to seeing Donald Finn portray Matt in upcoming seasons. Moving on, we get this amazing dress on Moraine. This is very likely taking place in the Foregate in Kyrian. We know Moraine will return to Kyrian, but these backgrounds definitely seem to match what we've seen in other teasers of the Foregate. 
Moraine is not wearing her shoulder pad looking things from previous seasons, which we all assumed were part of a Kyrian in fashion. I now wonder if the shoulder pads were more of a nod to Moraine's fighter mentality and were meant to seem more like armor than the specific fashion of her homeland. This looks to me like a very formal dress, perhaps one she'll be wearing to visit a certain party at Barthanus's manor? It's wonderful to see her continuing to wear her Kisiera, which again implies to me that she's heading to a formal event of some sort, since we have only seen her wear it during formal meetings. Obviously, her Great Serpent Ring is visible, so she's not likely in Falma. But do you think she's still unable to channel at this point? I'm also more convinced than ever that this shot of Swan from the sneak peek teaser is probably happening in Kyrian as well. If I'm right, it will be nice to see Swan and Moraine together again. One last thing before I move on. I do feel like the quality of the costumes has improved all around from what we've seen of Season 2 so far. Still very colorful, but something about the material feels more refined and real to me in these shots. Again, it could just be the color grading, or the fact that I've been watching highly compressed versions of the show for so long now, but it looks and feels better quality to me than Season 1. Next, we have Egwene in what looks like novice white, wearing an apron and probably working in the kitchens in the tower. Do you think we'll get to meet Laris, the mistress of the kitchens? That would be fun. Also, did you notice that Egwene's hair is unbraided? I wonder if there will be some tension between Egwene and Nynaeve about that. We have this shot of Egwene wearing more or less the same thing, which clearly takes place in the White Tower, although this looks to me like she might just be arriving in her rooms in the tower for the first time. We also get this shot from the sneak peek, which shows Egwene in the exact same clothing here. As I asked before, regarding this shot of Lan and his horse Mandarb, how did Lan get Mandarb back? Moraine too for that matter, since it seems pretty clear that this shot from the sneak peek teaser shows Moraine's horse, Aldeep. Last we saw the horses, they ran off from the Waygate when the majority of the group went to Faldara. Did Matt wrangle them up and get them safely back to the tower? Not likely. I could believe that Mandarb and Aldeeb are smart enough to return to the White Tower on their own, but what about Bella and the other horses? What if Bella actually ran all the way back home to the two rivers? This could be an interesting way to get Tam and possibly Abel Cawthon involved in the story for season two, but I doubt that's gonna happen. It's more likely that maybe Matt finds Bella or something. Anyway, could this mean that Lan and Moraine return to the White Tower in season two to retrieve their horses? This is pure speculation on my part since they don't return to the tower in book two. Also, Moraine was banished from the tower, so I'm not entirely sure how this will work. I suppose Lan could go in and retrieve the horses himself. We also know that Moraine had something weird happen to her at the end of season one when Ishamayel seemed to cause her to possibly permanently, or more likely temporarily, block her connection with the One Power. Could this affect her oaths as well? Maybe she can enter the White Tower while she's lost her connection to the One Power. Although she did clearly say at the end of season one that she cannot lie. Could that be a lie? If Swan is meeting Moraine and Kyrian, is it possible that this is when Lan and Moraine get their horses back? Could Swan and the tower bring their horses to them in Kyrian? I have a hard time believing that this scene of Moraine with Aldeeb happens after the Kyrian plot lines, but I'll discuss this more in my upcoming season two story speculation video. Besides the fact that Nynaeve's hair is still braided, which is obvious and should remain that way basically forever, I think this scene confirms the speculation about the background in the recent JordanCon video being the accepted test chamber. This is most likely one of the arches that we see in the background from the JordanCon video. I talk about this in greater detail in my recent video about it. Remember, the Aiel here are just on this set for an interview and are very likely not actually going to be in this location in the show. I also appreciate the fact that Nynaeve is wearing clothing in this scene. I always thought it was weird that the ceremonies that the women go through in the books almost always require them to be naked, but the men never have to be naked for their ceremonies. I appreciate this change from the books. This shot to me looks like it probably happens before she enters the arches. She looks nervous and unsure. I imagine there will be more blood and water, and she'll probably look more haggard after her testing is over. I really can't wait to see how this all comes together. The banner in this shot gives away the fact that Rand is definitely in Falma at this point. I love the idea that Rand is about to face either Turok or Ishamayel at this moment. His fancy collar is very clear, so I'm sure he'll meet back up with Moraine and Lan before coming to Falma, probably in Kyrian, where I think this shot from the sneak peek teaser takes place. I think we were right that Rand is wearing fancier clothing in this shot, and Moraine and Lan are with him. I also like that Rand looks a bit like an Aiel wearing a shufa. And finally, this shot. The arched opening here seems to match the ones from this shot in the behind the scenes teaser. We get a much clearer view of Masima in this shot. Is it just me or is Masima wearing Shan Chan looking armor over his Shinaran armor here? Could they be attempting to sneak into Falma pretending to be Shan Chan's soldiers? The armor he's wearing in this shot definitely doesn't match the armor he and the other Shinarans are wearing in other shots. Also, notice the intricate design on Avienda's belt knife and the fact that she's got blood all over her. 
I also noticed these boxes in the background, which look similar to the box that's shown in the Season 2 rap teaser here. Though I'm still convinced that there might be more to this box from the teaser. Could this box that appears to have a dragon-like design on it actually contain the banner of the dragon? Or is it just a set piece or prop like these boxes in the background? Another minor thing I notice is that Perrin doesn't appear to have the sword at his side that can be seen in some of the other teaser shots. What if they're actually facing the White Cloaks in this location? Perhaps Perrin will get the axe from Dane Bornhold in an upcoming fight. And that's it. What did I miss? Let me know what you're most excited about in the comments, and be sure to keep your comments respectful. Racist, bigoted, or hateful comments, or any name calling will be immediately deleted. Please feel free to share your opinions, positive or negative, but please remember to be respectful. Until next time, let the dragon ride again on the winds of Prime. <laughs>